Okay, so Marvel has just released a new game trailer for Marvel's Spider-Man 2 game. Um, you guys know my thoughts on this. This this will be terrible. Um, the game is more like an expansion pack. It's not really a full sequel. It's not even a graphical upgrade. And they're marketing this like it's some huge improvement when clearly it's not... This is Brian Intahar, Senior Creative Director at Insomniac Games. Thank you for all of your amazing feedback to our demo at the showcase earlier this year. Marvel Spider-Man 2 is filled with an amazing story and story missions. But today I'm here to provide you with a first look at how the open world experiences of so notice how he says amazing story and story missions. Keep that in mind. So while you're playing this game and you find out the story is terrible, remember what they told you. Remember what they told you when you ask for a refund. They use the same arcs in all Spider-Man games. Isn't Spider-Man played out at this point? Like, how many times can you use the same arcs over and over? We got the, the, the freaking Venom arc. We got the Lizard arc. We got all these same arcs that have just been recycled and milked dry. Is this really an exciting story if it's just the same story we've been told for years? Really? Evolving and how the game is built to take full advantage of the PlayStation 5. The, there's nothing to take advantage of. The PlayStation 5 is already obsolete. It, it, it's like a freaking toaster in terms of graphical capability compared to a PC. So this is just blatant false advertising. Oh yeah, the, the PS5, it's so advanced. It's so advanced. No, it's not. It, 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 the PS5 compared to a medium grade PC is like comparing the freaking Xbox Series X to a F S to a freaking PS2. It's, it's not graphically superior. It's not even a step up. It's more like a downgrade to anybody who's played any game with even a, a, a remotely good graphics. The first thing you'll notice is that our city has nearly doubled in size with the addition of two iconic New York boroughs, Queens and Brooklyn. They said doubled in size? That doesn't look like doubled in size to me. Is that our city has nearly doubled in size. Bro, they said doubled in size. Now, notice how this island, it's big, right? And then the quote-unquote double island is super freaking thin. Look how thin that is compared to this. This island, you actually have some meat in it. You actually have a full map. And then this, it's just a thin freaking hot dog island or whatever. Hot dog shaped island. It's not real. And islands don't even look like that naturally. Why is the island so thin? It's clear they're cutting corners. Why not just make a island equally as big why is like 70 percent of your map water like look at the think about it. all this water for what you can't do anything in the water so why even have all that rendering being taken up with water and this island is so thin there's really no point in even putting it in the game Okay, and, 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 and they're reusing the same map from the last game. This is literally the same exact map from the last game, and they're selling it like it's a new map, and they add this little tiny expansion like that actually means anything. It's a joke. Eyes with the addition of two iconic New York boroughs, Queens and Brooklyn. And we've introduced the web wing. Queens and Brooklyn, it will be like a tiny 
toy version of the actual um, Queens in Brooklyn. Now, does that look like Queens in Brooklyn to you? Addition of two iconic New York boroughs, Queens and Brooklyn. We got two identical buildings with no effort put into it. You got two identical buildings. Literally, these two right here are exactly the same. No effort, no originality, no diversity in their in their freaking buildings. It's so boring. Like this game is so boring to look at. Seriously, this game is so boring. You could tell they just copy and pasted assets over and over again with the NPCs, with the story, with the characters, with the buildings. Everything is just copied and pasted. They cannot, they don't have, Marvel does not have an original bone within their body. And we've introduced the web wings, an entirely new mechanic that we combine with so for the web swinging. So for the people who are too lazy to actually web swing properly, as if this game wasn't easy enough and automated enough with the web swinging system, now they added freaking wings, which defies the laws of physics. You just turn off your brain and literally fly everywhere. Do we really need that? Do we really need that in our game? More noob-friendly mechanics like flying? Okay, when, when web swinging is already super duper automated. Allows you to traverse the city in a whole new way and at faster speeds than ever before. Who cares? You know how boring that gets? If you play this for more than an hour, you will be bored out of your mind. It's so automated. It's so... It's so basic. There's no mechanics to it. It's just hold down this button and Spider-Man does all the work for you with no effort. How is that fun? The, the, what made Spider-Man 2 for the PS2 um, web swing so good was that you actually had to use your brain. You actually had to have a basic understanding of physics in order to swing from building to building now it's it's completely automated Com too automated now a little bit of automation in your game is good but now have literally having no system no system of a punishment it's it's good to punish the player when he messes up when you literally fall 20 off a 20 story building you should die your your character should not survive in this game if you fall off a hundred story build story building spider-man he just does some stupid animation to save himself and you live so there's no real challenge it's it's boring boar fest noob friendly nonsense whether it's a neighborhood backdrop of Queens or the fireworks that light up the sky over Coney Island, exploring these areas. Now that looks pre-rendered. Whether it's a neighborhood backdrop of Queens or the fireworks that. I'm pretty sure this is pre-rendered. Okay, the rest of the game did not look like this. The rest of the gameplay looked nothing close to this. Light up the sky over Coney Island. Exploring these areas will feel much different than the towering skyscrapers of Manhattan, while also delivering memorable locales like Peter Parker's old stomping grounds in Midtown High and Miles Morales' current place of learning, Broken Visions Academy. Hey, Miles, what's up? Now, can you enter those buildings? Notice how they show you these places, but they never show the inside. They never let you go inside each building. Okay, they're showing this huge, vast city, allegedly. And and they show all these structure structures, but 99% of those buildings, you can't even go inside it. And with the Matrix, um, the Matrix tech demo, they've showed us that with today's technology, you can render a city with full interiors that you can enter and it won't lag the game or crash the game that technology is possible um fully enterable interiors now that shows us that these companies like marvel spider-man it that they're cutting corners because they're not letting us enter buildings they're not letting us fully interact with the ai i saw a gta 5 mode where you could literally talk to an ai integrated like literally a chat GPT style 
integrated AI and it's integrated with the actual combat NPCs where they base their conversation and you can fully interact. It's, it's mind blowing how far technology has progressed. Yet these game, these mainstream AAA gaming companies aren't keeping up <clears throat> with the pace of technology. Okay, we have AI, we have the technology that fully enter buildings, yet they're still selling this garbage, this remake, this expansion pack, like it's a new innovative game. It's not. It's just not. Speaking of our heroes, Marvel Spider-Man 2 will introduce the ability to switch between the two wall crawlers in the open world. And Who cares? Okay, GTA 5 did that 10 years ago. And, thanks to the power of the PlayStation 5, you can make that switch almost instantly. So, they're telling us they ran out of ideas. We have nothing new to add to our game. So, hey, instead of having Miles Morales in a separate game, we could put Miles Morales in a Peter Parker game, and we could make the player switch between Miles Morales and, and Peter Parker. Oh, wow, that's so in a No! Just because you have two, and really, there's no real difference between Miles Morales and Peter Parker. They're both nerds, and they're both Spider-Man. The only difference is one is black, and one is white. That's the only real difference. And one is voiced by a different actor. That's the only difference. They're the same character. They're, they're, they're both the exact same character, except they have physical differences, and, and, and their voices sound a little different. They're the same exact character. Describe to me what the difference is between Miles Morales and Peter Parker, because they're the same freaking person. Delivering a bigger city and playing as not one, but two spider heroes were big goals for Marvel Spider-Man 2. But this time around, it was equally important to provide a greater sense of exploit. You can't do that in the game. There's a 90% chance you can't do that in the game. So they're saying they're going to make an AI on um, Miles Morales that joins in with you in combat? That's what they're saying? So they're going to have a fully AI integrated, fully noted or nodded AI Miles Morales or Peter Parker that can swing around, that you can fully interact with, fully fight with, no scripting. They're saying they're going to do that. By, by showing this, they imply that this is what the game is actually going to be like, which is just blatantly false. Okay, I guarantee this is scripted. Or a cutscene. Goals for Marvel Spider-Man 2. But this time around, it was equally important to provide a greater sense of exploration. Yeah, that's scripted. That's obviously scripted. Look at, look at, look at how Peter Parker is, is doing this stupid animation. That just tells you it's scripted. He's doing a, a, a finger point or whatever, and then the camera pans. That shows you this is not gameplay. So keep that in mind, people who are thinking about buying this game on re release, which really you should wait until like months before, after a game comes out before you even think about buying it because these gaming companies do not care about the quality of their products. They don't care about lying to your face. I don't know why anybody even buys games anymore because they're just lying to your face saying this will be in the game when they know it's not. They know for a fact you won't be able to integrate, interact with Miles Morales outside of cutscenes. It's ridiculous, man. And discovery. As you progress through the main story, a number of new activities and storylines will become available. What story? What story exactly are you progressing through? Because you're just replaying an old story that's been told millions of times. What story? There's nothing new about this story. Available. The majority of those will now be represented by visual cues in the world that grab your attention, such as a flock of Craven's Talendra. Who cares? You, you gotta put that in your game trailer? Who cares about a flock of freaking scripted, freaking AI, boring robots? Drone circling a building, a mysterious symbol projected into the sky, or even an unfamiliar spider bot ping emitting from one of the rooftops. 
you put this in your game trailer like anybody actually cares? Oh wow, we put a floating orb over over objects and buildings. That's never been done before. Yes, it has. Nearly every game has some form or, or, or some sort of concept of putting floating objects in order to tell you what's there, especially in open world games. This is not new. And it looks stupid, in my opinion. It just completely takes you out of the game. Oh, wow, there's a giant floating object that defies the laws of physics, and it just destroys your sense your sense of disbelief. Many activities, like the hunter's cloaked blinds that overlook the Big Apple, lead to even greater challenges, yet yield worthy rewards and new information about... This is just... He's just... Um, I don't know what he's taught. I don't know what the narrator of this trailer is even talking about anymore. He's just spewing nonsense. Lines that overlook the Big Apple lead to even greater challenges, yet yield worthy rewards and new information about Marvel's greatest hunter. Scripted. Lead to all of this is scripted, so I don't even know why they're showing this. Even greater challenges, yet yield worthy rewards and new information about Marvel's greatest hunter. When you're fighting those robot bird things, I guarantee it won't be that in depth. Like I, I guarantee it won't dive on you. I guarantee you won't be able to, to, to dodge it like, like that they're showing in the trailer. Lead to even greater challenges, yet yield worthy rewards and new information about. I mean, look at that. That's clearly a cutscene. Marvel's greatest hunter, Craven. Others will lead to a climactic showdown. Ugh. Look at the facial animation. That looks so uncanny. Like, look at this guy. What is this, like, PS2 graphics? Oh my god, he looks so dead. <laughs> They're calling this graphically innovative? What are they smoking? Lead to a climactic showdown of Marvel villains not yet seen in this. Lag. Look at that frame rate drop. Craven. Others will lead to a climactic showdown with Marvel villains. Anytime they show fire or rain on the screen or explosions, you just get a massive frame rate drop. So look at this. Look at the frame rate drop. Pay attention to the frame rate drop because I'm not lying. Okay, look at this. Not yet seen in this Spider-Man. just lags. As soon as he touches down... It just, the, 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 the PS5 just loses its mind. Okay, the PS5 can barely run this game. It can barely, so they had to cut corners. They had to do a lot, a lot, a lot of cutting corners in order to get this game to run on the crappy PS5. So let's rewatch this one more time. Pay attention to the frame rate. Raven, others will lead to a cut. I think there's a way to actually see the frame rate on YouTube, is there? Guess not. Matic showdown on Marvel villains, not yet seen in the Spider-Man universe. The spider heroes have new AR tech in the lenses of their masks, providing a quick glimpse of activities already discovered. That's not even worth mentioning. If that wasn't in the last game, that's kind of sad. And I'm starting to think they're cutting corners on purpose. They're purposely taking features out of their game just so they can s sell it in their advertisements for the next game. Because this really should have been in the first game. I mean, I don't know why it wasn't in the first game. Unless they're just lazy. Or helping locate new ones yet to be revealed. You can always refer to the upgraded Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man app to quickly track nearby areas of interest. Pretty sure that was in the last game, wasn't it? And if it wasn't in the last game, why wasn't it in the last game? You seriously didn't think of putting any sort of feature so the freaking main character of your game can find new quests or new activities. This is sad that they even have to put this in their game trip. The app will also include incoming requests from those who call Marvel's New York home. Some will ask What a freaking soy boy. Look at this. The app will also include incoming requests from what the heck is that, man? What is soy? Just, I could just smell the soy through my freaking computer screen. Like, somebody should turn that into a freaking Wojak. From those who call Marvel's New York home. Some will ask for either Spider-Hero to help, 
while others, like the students of Brooklyn Visions calling upon Miles, will require you to put on the mask of a specific hero. All these activities, including crimes you stop from the game's various enemy factions, also now feed into the new district. Oh my god, you can fight random faceless enemies over and over again. What is the point? Who cares? Oh man, this feature was literally in every single Spider-Man game. There's Spider-Man games from like 10 years ago that had this same exact feature. And they're selling it to you like it's brand new. Like, oh, it's so innovative. You can freaking fight random faceless um, NPCs. But instead, we're going to make it gang territory. We're going to make it about territory. Oh, wow. No. You're not getting anything as a player from this. You're not getting any reward from fighting these random faceless enemies. It, d it adds literally nothing to the story. Will it have any impact on the final outcome of the story? Of course not. Because this is a linear crap game that plays plays like a movie, really. It's not even a game. It's It's a movie. It's a movie game. It's more of a movie than it is a game. Because I'm pretty sure 90% of this game will be cutscenes. And the other 10% will be fighting faceless random enemies in order to get XP. And just it's just one of the most noob-friendly games. I think this is one of the, probably the most noob-friendly games I've ever seen progress system, which even provides more rewards and unlocks our brand new fast travel system. As you can see here, the PlayStation 5 and its SSD means you can move across the city with very little down. Look at those Looney Tune physics. As you can see here, the PlayStation 5 and its SSD means you can move Just straight up Looney Tune physics. Oh, swing webs. We're not going to actually um, improve web swinging. We're just going to make the character fly for some reason. Because who the heck wants to fly in a, a Spider-Man game? What is the point of adding flying to a Spider-Man game? How about make the swinging more comprehensive? How about that? But the swinging is boring because they just automated it. They didn't add any sort of skill ceiling at all to swinging. Matter of fact, swinging in the old Spider-Man games is way more fun. So they just had to add a stupid flying mechanic that takes away all skill from this game. You know, <laughs> what little skill there was, that was left is gone. Who would be excited for this? Move across the city with very little downtime. Finally, the more city you explore and the more activities you complete, the more ways you'll be able to customize your spider hero. Activity. That was how they said activities you complete. They're talking to you like a literal child. Okay, this is. <laughs> that's all gamers are now. It's children and idiot adults that like new friendly games. There's no real game. There's no smart gamers left. So they're going to talk down to you like a literal child. This includes mastering additional combat abilities and traversal skills, acquiring improving gadgets, upgrading through the new suit tech system, and of course, unlocking a- You mean skill tree, which is literally in every game that has ever existed? Every single player game in 2023 has a skill tree. This is nothing new. This is nothing to advertise your game on. If this is all they can show us, in their game trailer to get us to buy it that that means the game is probably boring and mediocre and there's nothing really exciting about this game that's what i'm getting from this they really aren't showing anything to get me personally to buy this game additional spider suits and we're talking lots and lots of suits Marvel Spider-Man 2 will feature over 65 suits from the comics, movies, and multiple original designs. And thanks to the all-new suit style system, you'll now have more than 200 different ways to outfit your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. They should have had that in the first game. In the first game, they should have allowed um, costume customization. 
Okay, I don't know why they didn't have that in the first game. So they're taking features from these games and putting it into the next game and acting like it's 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 oh man it's it's new aren't you so happy we let you guys customize your suit why wasn't that in the first game why wasn't that in the second game why why are we acting like this is impressive when most games from like 20 years ago had the same exact feature games should by default have customization why can you not customize even more you should custom be able to customize everything in this game you should have a little spider-man hangout or spider-man layer that you can customize you can't do that you can't you can't customize like a home base or something you can't customize your locker you can't customize your apartment you can't customize anything you can't you can't choose what job spider-man works on the side and they're acting like this is, oh man, we allowed you to choose a red suit or a blue suit. And and, and like literally 70% of, of these suits look exactly the same. Like, oh, we, we're going to let you choose dark blue instead of light blue. Oh, this is so innovative. And I know it's just a reskin. They're, they're, they're packaging reskins and putting it into a full game. And, and selling it like literally this is just a reskin of marvel spider-man one oh man we're gonna give you new suits no they're not new they're just reskins of the old suit it's not a new fully fledged model okay modders can do this in a day you can make all these skins i bet a skilled modder can make all these these skins and let it stop calling them suits they're skins because this is a reskin i bet a skilled modder can make all of these suits in a day yes a day and they're selling it as if it's worth the price of a full game these features on behalf of insomniac games we couldn't be more excited about what this expanded city has to offer and all expanded city so the old city from the old game with nothing new plus a tiny miniature new version of that city that reuses assets and buildings from the old city in the old game and we're going to charge 70 dollars for this quote-unquote new game yeah people are so freaking stupid all the new ways you'll experience marvel's new york we look forward to seeing you swinging around in marvel spider-man 2 when it launches october 20th why do they have to keep saying marvel spider-man marvel spider-man just say spider-man have they really run out of names that bad or are they just want free free promotion it's so weird how games are called Marvel Spider-Man. What's next? Are they going to say Activision's Call of Duty? Microsoft's Halo? Like, it's just such a stupid way to name your game. Oh my god, that's stupid. Only on PlayStation 5. Did he just shoot lightning? Did they seriously just give Spider-Man lightning <laughs> they've run out of ideas they've officially run out of ideas and you're swinging around in marvel spider-man 2 when it launches october 20th that's game breaking do you know how easy the game would be after unlocking freaking lightning so they're turning Miles Morales into a Mary Sue because that's what it looks like. The whole draw of Spider-Man was that he was a superhero, but he wasn't too powerful. Spider-Man was never supposed to be too powerful. Yes, he was strong, but he had his limitations. That's the whole interesting part about Spider-Man. Now, when you give Spider-Man these omnipotent powers like lightning blast, where you can just clear a whole room full of bad guys with one press of a button, that just 
defeats the whole purpose of Spider-Man. These people don't know anything about Spider-Man. They don't even care about Spider-Man. Okay? <laughs> this game is, is it's a noob fest. Noobs will flock to buy this game with no sword, not even knowing why they're even buying it. They don't know why they like it. They don't know why they like the story. They're just buying it because it's another Spider-Man game. They'll buy anything with the label Spider-Man put on it. They don't care if it's a reskin of the last game. They don't care if it's graphically out of date. They don't care. They'll just buy it because it's Spider-Man. So, yeah, that's my thoughts on this game. It's obviously going to be trash. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments.